Starting. All right. Welcome to Ta Ta, -ta Takeaways. <laughs> hey, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, man, what a great day it's been. God is so good. And uh, coming to you just here from South Georgia, from First Baptist Church, Ty Ty. With caramel corn, with popcorn, because it's fall. You've been eating that for like three weeks. I, I'm i the only one in the house, I think, that yeah. is eating the caramel corn. I love popcorn. I love caramel corn. So good. Sometimes I'll mix it with peanut butter. Fall is my favorite season, and... I love trunk or treats, which our trunk or treat at church is October yes. 29th. Bring October candy. 25th is when the candy's Throw the candy due. in those black little tubs. Tubs. Black Totes. big tubs. It says Totes. candy on it. It does say candy on it. Snickers, There's... Kit Kat, Reese's. Snickers Cubs. are my favorite. And Listen, Rolos. Rolos. But the candy's for the kids, not oh. the adults, right? Well, I can't <laughs> promise I'm not going to eat some of well, it, so... Whatever's left over, yes, the adults can have. Look, Almond Joy. If yep. you need a good idea about how to tie God into your trunk or tree, into yes. decorating your trunk, go in the foyer of the sanctuary. Kayla has a piece of paper with some ideas printed out on that bulletin board. Go read those ideas. They're really cute ideas. So, and yeah. if you don't have a trunk, do a truck or treat. So back truck your truck or up. Treat. Hey, that's going to be October the 29th. It's going to be instead of our Sunday evening regular service. So be sure to get the word out. Invite people to that. It's a great time just to get people in the community connected to our Share church the family. On Facebook. Yes, that's right. And, and just to let our community know that we're here and that we want to be involved yeah. and we care about them. So yes. uh, that's exciting. So be sure to be in tune with that. Uh, be ready for that. Yep. And then also something else we need to announce is uh, we are putting together an online directory and also yes. a physical like hard copy directory too because there's just so many people at the church and people are trying to connect faces with names. So Ms. Teresa, Teresa and Peterson, Brother Walter yes. are taking pictures. They set up in the, the social hall. Yeah, so you can go with your family uh, or by yourself, you know, go get your picture made for the church directory. Yeah. And um, if you got your family pictures made last Sunday do it by again. Ms. Teresa, you have to do that again. There was a malfunction with the SD drive or something, so... She apologizes for that. Uh, you have to come do it again. And um, so if you've not done that, she's going to be set up in the social hall after every service. So uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, I think even Wednesday night. So uh, just be be um, be sure to get that done. Yes. So exciting things are happening around here still hey, at Ty Ty. Let me say this. Church. Operation Christmas Child. She That's wants. one of my favorite, like, things to do when John was a youth pastor. Do you, oh, do you yes, remember this? Yes. So this was back before our kids were born. This was back Man, wow. This was like eighteen years ago that uh, we took wasn't like you're the, with no kids. It was but I love our boys. But we took the youth to the the manufacturing plant. The packing facility. What is we it loaded called? the trucks. So we had the youth lined up there with us on the assembly yep. line. This was like such a good memory. And we would actually put the toys in. Actually, no. We inspected them. So all the oh, churches yeah, yeah. Sent, I just remember the yes. line coming with boxes and toys. Yeah, and we would <laughs> inspect the boxes before they went on the trucks to be fl flown to where they were going. So we would make sure, I guess. I That's just remember right. toys and boxes. Yep. And it was like hundreds yep. of them coming through. Thousands of them. And we would make sure stuff was in it. That was fun. Yes. So, yes. Keep your eyes, post ears. So forever. that we've got Keep boxes. Your eyes and ears open I think forever. there's boxes in the social hall, the shoe boxes uh, that you can get, the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. Our church's goal is 200 shoe boxes. I think we can pass that, don't you? I mean, I think we can do more than 200. And so those are those are 200 plus kids who's That's lives. That's fun to do with me. friends and people too. Yeah, Sunday school um, classes, you can do them as a Sunday school class. Do them as your family at home. Just buy all the items, bring it to a location, yeah. have the boxes there, and all of y'all yeah. do pack the boxes together. That's that's fun. That's right. That's a lot of fun. Um, so now can I talk and about Sunday morning? The yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so something 
cool happened Sunday morning. Somebody got saved. Yes, somebody got a saved. Teenager. Yeah, a teenager. Before church, yes. before Sunday yes. school. Yes. I don't know. How cool is that? Yeah, that's God awesome. God is always working. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait till the invitation to get saved. I mean, it's like you can walk on the church property and know that, wow, I need to get saved. Go talk to somebody here who can share the gospel with you and lead you to the Lord. Yeah, and right. you don't have to wait till the hymn, the, you know, invitation song. The hymnals being sung, whatever. That's so right. So somebody got saved and five people joined the church. Yes, that's and the right. church broke yeah. out in applause, clapping. Yeah. Before you could even finish saying, Can yeah. I get a motion? They're like, All clapping for. Yeah. These people joining the church. So that is exciting so day. Yeah. Exciting. Very exciting. And the kids sang two songs at church on Sunday morning. I'm in the Lord's army. And yes, Jesus sir. Loves me. And G I thought they were gonna do deep and wide. What happened to deep and wide? Or is that I don't know soccer? Titus was singing deep and hey, wide. Hey, soccer, by the way, soccer kicks off. Like yes. the first games are coming up this coming this, Saturday. Is it this Saturday. Yes. So my listen, team's gonna win. Listen, if you go to church here and if you don't have anything to do with soccer Please come out and be our cheerleaders. Yes. Just come out and watch and mingle with the crowd and meet people and, uh, you know, help the kids get water, chase yeah. the soccer balls. Like, uh, just come out. And Nate happened to be at one of the practices, and then he ended up helping me coach or something. So if you show up, you might get roped in to help him. But it's a fun time. Like, yeah. it's a lot of, it's a lot of yeah. fun. And Coach Jimmy was able to get the ABAC soccer ladies to help at that practice last yeah, week. Yeah. And um, so they had a picture of that. William sent a picture, and you can see it somewhere posted. But it was a big crowd, so that, that is just so nice of them to mm -hmm. come out and, and help these kids. So that it, that's, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. And I shouldn't have talked trash about my team's better than your team, I think, <laughs> because my team started dwindling, and yet I was like, okay, Lord, I get no. the hint, no no bragging. Like, you know, the, pride, bi the Bible has before, a word for that. Pride comes before pride the fall. Comes before I destruction. was bragging about my team, and yeah, and but guess what, we've had some new sign-ups lately. Yeah, it's so. been good, it's been fun, I've, I've enjoyed the, my, my team, and Coach Jimmy's been doing all the heavy lifting, I just kind of. You walk around and take pictures. Yeah, I take pictures and <laughs> make sure all the coaches do their devotions with their teams, you know, that kind of thing. So, so Sunday morning, uh, you may have heard of the quote, little is much if God is in it, but yep. you turned it around and said, much is little if God ain't in it. I did use the word ain't, didn't I? I never said ain't until I had been married to him for probably 10 years. Hey, is ain't a word. I, I never said it. It's in the dictionary. It is. It is a oh, word. Oh, wow. So... Well, I Ain't wrote that it down. Cool. I, I wrote it down because you did yeah. say it that way, and I try to keep a record of your quotes that you say. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked about the hungry crowd. Yeah, in we talked Matthew about feeding, 14, feeding the five thousand men, yeah. which was really maybe seventeen thousand people, counting women and children. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe that's more. a lot of people. It's a lot of folks. A lot of people. And he fed them until they were full. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. So you talked about the message of Jesus awakens a hunger. You know, mm -hmm. the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. And then once you taste him, you're like, oh, he is good. Oh, yeah. wow, I'm hungry for more of him. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you feed grows, though. You can quench the spirit, and you can pour that fire out and not desire God anymore. But you can feed that hunger for righteousness as well. So you said Jesus is a soul magnet. People who are hungry for Jesus move the heart of Jesus. You know, God, what Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw the thousands of people there. He was moved with compassion, and he healed the sick. I wonder how many hours it took him to go around and heal the sick out of that many thousands of yeah. people. I, I think, mean, you know. I think, you know, I think <laughs> the Bible speaks that maybe it was morning when they arrived, and then it was late in the evening. Them, so probably all day. So yeah, probably from like yeah. right after breakfast through lunch, all almost day. to dinner. Yeah. And all that day. reminds me of those crusades in other countries where when evangelists will come, like go to another country and set up a tent, like the people will stand there and wait in line to be prayed for by the preacher, and they'll stand there for hours. And 
Uh, you don't see that a lot in America, maybe, hopefully. I have seen, though, where people are starting to get baptized in America, like 47 football players, or, like, I'm seeing it in different areas where people are lining up to get baptized, so that's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but you talked about Jesus has time for you. He won't turn you away. He met with that woman at the well who had a, you know, checkered past, but he made time for her. And <laughs> was that where you said she left her pot? <laughs> yeah. Was that this one? Yeah, that was. I mean, was yeah. that Sunday morning? Yeah, I was just. Yeah. Uh, that was funny. So yeah. um, I thought it was neat that Jesus has time for you because sometimes if you want to meet with, you know, the pastor, he might be busy, but, or if you want to meet with your friend or family, they might be busy. But like, yeah. if you want to meet with God, he's always there. Yeah. Like, you can pray to him anytime. You can talk to him anytime. And he always does have time for you. That's right. So, that's pretty amazing to think about. You shared some staggering statistics that had me so heartbroken. I literally started bawling my eyes out during the message because thinking of the kids who are being sex trafficked, it's just heartbreaking and, Yeah, And it's not about. just that. Like, um, you know, because I was talking about, the scripture was talking about this crowd that was hungry. and But then God used a human resource to meet the need. He didn't, God always uses what we have. He doesn't do, he doesn't give us something that we don't already have. He blesses what we have and uses that to meet the needs of the hungry crowd or the multitude. We're his vessel. That he can fill. That's right. And so we were talking about really the, the demand was high. There was over 15,000 people and only five loaves and two fish. And mm -hmm. so I was, as I was preparing for the message, I was thinking about the monumental size task of reaching the world with the gospel before Jesus comes. And then I was thinking of all the obstacles and all the impossibilities. And so that kind of led me to studying and doing some research on just different statistics kind of that we're facing that are mm -hmm. crippling people, that are ruining people's lives, that are breaking people's hearts and homes and making them hard to the gospel. And, mm -hmm. you know, it seems impossible when you think about it, but... Mm -hmm. You know, it, one of the things that really blew my mind was that America is in the top three. I think like the Philippines, America, and one, I can't remember the other nation, are the top three for human trafficking. Not not only sex trafficking, human trafficking. That's uh, people, I mean, selling people for labor, for all, all kinds of things. Mm. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's sad, you know. Mm -hmm. um, very sad. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think when, just like Jesus was moved with compassion to go and heal mm -hmm. the sick, when God so moves our heart with compassion for these kids, you know, it can move us into action to do something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I remember reading a book by the man who started that, uh, one of the ministries where you can give money to feed orphans every month. And, I read the book about these orphans in India, and it so moved me, and it broke my heart. Like, I just was sitting there at the table just not. It was like I was speechless and so just broken for these kids that that's when we started, you know. Yeah. We're like, maybe maybe we should support an orphan somewhere. Like, there's something. There's got to be something we as a, as a person can do to help. And I think that's when follow the Holy Spirit's leading. You know, like, if he tells you to adopt a child, adopt a child. If he tells you to foster children, foster children. If he tells you to start a Celebrate Recovery ministry to help people who are, who are addicted to all kinds of things, start a Celebrate Recovery ministry. If he is, is leading you to, to help people who are contemplating suicide, I think there's, there's a training coming up through the Georgia Baptist Convention for trauma care, for people who have who have been through severe trauma, things that you mentioned, I mean, horrible things, that, uh, uh, and you can be, you know, trained to help and to counsel people who've been through and stuff. And the whole focus of, one of the whole, one of the focuses of the message was to encourage our church family and God's children that 
you know, the little, like you said, what difference is me starting to celebrate recovery going to make? What difference is it really going to make me supporting one or one thing? And the whole focus is to encourage God's people that little is much if God's in it. it mm -hmm. does, sometimes we think, well, I can't do much. I can't make a difference. What, what is my little bit going to do? But when God is in our little, the five loaves and two fish, God, God used really a meal that was kind of designed for maybe one or two to yeah. feed over 15,000 people. So God can take my limited resources, if I give them to him and invite him to use those. Mm -hmm. He will yeah, multiply. God will multiply. Mm -hmm. And God will use what, what could really keep one or two people sustained to 15,000 people. So mm -hmm. little is much yeah. if God's in it. Yeah. You said look at what we do have. Don't just yeah. look at the impossibility of it, but look yeah. at what we do have. I mean, how many, times, how many times have you said or I said, man, if I had this, I would do this for God. Oh, man, if I just had, you know, more of this or if I just had more money or if I had more influence, if I had... Boy, if I just had more, I would do more. And, you know, sometimes looking at what we don't have keeps us from doing something to impact the world. God is just waiting on us to give him what we already what have. What we already have, yeah. Uh, we are, we, you said, we are limited so God can be exalted. Yeah, that's right. Look at what we do have. And ask, so use what you do have. Yes. You know, like, you do have a cell phone you can make a post about God. And I was telling my Sunday school class today, I said, I challenged them, I said, this week, post something about God on yeah. your social media. Because there are kids out there who are contemplating suicide, and they may see your post about God, and it may save their life. Yeah, that, like, use what you have. You have a phone. You have a voice. You have a mouth. You can share the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, you can... Pray to God. You can attend church. There are so many things that we can do that yeah. we're not, that maybe we're not doing every day. But you said, ask God for a heavenly touch. Yeah, not right. only do what you have with what you have, but ask God, God, please touch my life. And that's a, um, I don't know who taught me to pray this way for like Sundays for preachers and stuff, but like before. Sunday, before any kind of church service, God, I pray that you would touch and anoint the singing. Mm -hmm. Touch and yeah. anoint John as he preaches. Like, not only pray that touch for yourself, but pray yeah. that touch for the speakers, for the worship leaders. Pray that God would touch yeah. them. So well, that you know, was Jesus good. said to bring the five loaves and two fish to me. And then he, he took it, he blessed it, he multiplied it, and he gave it back. And then they used that to serve the people. And, you know, we just need Jesus' touch on our life. Oh, I mean, if you're a basketball mm -hmm. player and you've got that skill, you can really impact people's lives. But you need God's touch on your talents. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have mm -hmm. a gift to sing or a gift to organize. Or, you know, you may have a spare bedroom somewhere. Ask God's touch on that. And... Give it to God. He'll bless it. He'll multiply it. Mm -hmm. He'll use it to change lives. And and sometimes I think we get, I know I get maybe, I don't know if discouraged is the right word, but sometimes I get maybe disillusioned um, and think, man, things really aren't changing. I'm really not making a difference. Uh, but you I've thought that before. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So, you know, you might be thinking that too. Am I really making a difference? But if I mean to to for to have God's touch on your life, He's going to use you to make a difference in mm -hmm. someone's life. Mm -hmm. Fifteen thousand people were influenced by the disciples bringing Jesus what they did have, yep, and Him touching that. I I liked how you talked about you know they were told to make a brazen serpent and hold it up high, and mm. if someone got bit by a snake and they were going to die. They just had to look at the serpent and they would live. Yeah. And it, you were really encouraging us to, hey, hold up Jesus. Go and share Jesus yeah. with the world because the world, they're being bit by, you know, <laughs> the devil, I guess. Yeah. But they're, 
they're dying and going to hell if they're not a Christian, yeah. if they don't know the gospel. And you said, we have the answer. Mm -hmm. And how many times do I hide my light under a bushel, yeah. you know, and don't shine for Jesus out in the world? Yeah. Um, and that was just an encouragement and inspiration when I heard you say that. Man, we need to hold out the light to the world. Hey, Jesus saves. There's hope. There's hope. There's well, hope. So, because that's the thing when that when you know, it says they were drawn to Jesus and then He delivered them. You know, in verse fourteen, and He healed them. They heard about Him because because the message had spread, and when they came to where He was, He delivered them. So, Amen. you know, sharing the gospel. Sharing your testimony is what awakens that hunger in people and draws mm -hmm. them to the Savior. And then the Lord does the delivering. He does the healing. He, he gives life to them. Mm -hmm. so, yes. so, yeah, it was a good day. It was a great, was a great day. Good go day. back and listen to it. So, Nate, go listen to the one that says recorded in parentheses. Click, go to the church YouTube channel, yes. Tai Tai First Baptist Church. Click videos, and then it says recorded. Mm -hmm. Um, go listen to that message from Sunday morning. Yeah, the it title was is uh, so, Little is Much. It was so good. Little is so Much good. when God's in it. So God is moving here. He is working. Jump on board. Jump on board. Don't let the devil keep you out of church. Don't let him keep you out of Sunday school. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss what God has for you here and what part you can play here as well. So yeah. we love y'all. Take care. Bye. Bye.